Hallelujah. Welcome, beloved of God, on to this amazing time in the presence of God. We commence with a word of prayer to the glory of God as we proclaim John 3 in this incredible journey through the Gospel of John as we prepare to get into the eighth season of 150 Days of Psalms. I also bring great, great testimonies, but I will share those at the end. So we want to just go straight into the word of the Lord and through this prayer. I am Malcolm David, your host, and it's a joy and great delight to be able to share this word at this very time in a topic, the mystery of the new birth. We commence with prayer. Precious Father, we honor you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this moment that on this mission Monday we commence with proclaiming of your word and we thank you Lord that indeed it will become flesh and that you will lead us and that we will follow by your righteousness. So we thank you and we bless you in Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise be to the name of the Lord. I come in the morning watches again. It's 9 a.m. Hallelujah. What makes it very remarkable because today is a mission Monday and I'm so excited to be able to proclaim the word of God at this time. It's 9.05 in the a.m. on the 22nd of 22nd of January 2023. Yes, praise the name of the Lord. John chapter 3 says, Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who came from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. The flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things. I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. Verse 12. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if you speak of heaven, if I, if I speak of heavenly things? Hallelujah. We're still reading John 3 and verse number 13. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent, the snake in the, in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, For that also whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Let me just read it in this translation as I am reading from the NIV 1984 version. Verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Verse 17. I know verse 16. Majority of us know verse 16. But what about verse 17? Because verse 17 is also a very key uh, scripture for us to tell. It says this. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. 
but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men loved darkness instead of light. Because their deeds were evil, everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. Beloved of God, what a joy and great, great, amazing revelation about the mystery of the new birth. That when we look at the physical um, birthing of children, when children are born, it takes at least nine months for this to happen. For the birth to come to be, it takes nine months for adults, uh, for children, for, for human beings, for other creatures. It takes some time. It does not happen just instantly. But there is something about the, the, the spiritual birth. The spiritual birth has already happened. That it is only requiring confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. There is no gestation period. With the new birth, it is right away. With the new birth, the mystery of the new birth is that it is instantly released to you. If you confess with your mouth, whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. Hallelujah. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That this is actually the whole mystery because the other kind of birth takes time. It takes two people, a husband and a wife, to give birth to you. Whether you say, you know, even there is a term I hear, I don't know if you use it in the West. But here in Africa, we use the term single parent to mean that the husband or the wife brought up the children alone. But there is no single parent at all in the process of giving birth. The child must have a father. The child must have a mother. Even if they, do, they divorced, even if they separated, even if they did what? The child is not a single parent child. And this is what I want to mention, that in the mystery of the new birth, it is that the, con the, you know, the conception of the spiritual children was done by death. And that's why, unless you are born again, whoo, glory to God, you cannot be able to attain eternal life. You can't be able to receive eternal life. It's not possible because earthly things, require gestation period but spiritual things require belief be, require grace through faith it's the by grace through faith there's no other avenue of salvation there's no religion that can take you to salvation there is no activity of culture that can bring us to salvation the only salvation as jesus spoke to nicodemus in the night i remember one man who came to Samburu in the night seasons, uh, just recently in the, my last trip, the second last trip to Samburu, this was on the, um, it was on the, it was on the, it was on the third, third of December. It was at night. And this man, first of all, he wanted to find out, where have I come from? Where, which tribe am I? Which community did I come from? And he was so much interested in that. And there were other, Three, four Wazes were, who were with him in that night and they had visited the, the village where I went and they came to the Manyata where I was staying. So they wanted to find out this man who keeps coming for missions here. Where does he come from? Who is his father? Where is the language he speak? <laughs> for me, I told them, my answer was very brief. I said, there's a time that Jesus was visited by his mother and his brothers. And the disciples asked him, they told him, 
Jesus, your mother and brothers are outside. And Jesus replied, This is my mother and my brothers. Those who do the will of God. So even where I come from is not important. I told those men in Samburu that question. And then in the night season, it was completely pitch black. There was no electricity, just a small tiny solar bulb that is full of insects somewhere in a corner with insects swirling around that light and it was dimming because the, during the day the sun had not been so bright. So now in the night season, the light that was to come through the solar panel was not enough to charge a few phones and to give us electricity. So you can imagine, I want to paint the picture for you very well, that we are seated outside a manyata in a very expansive semi-arid place. There's a big mountain behind us, and then it's completely dark with a lot of sounds. You can hear some hyenas making noise, you can hear donkeys making noise, you can hear cows making noise. It is just remarkable. I cannot exchange that experience with anything. So this man, in the dark of the night, I explained to him and his friends the gospel of salvation. And because he had a name I could not pronounce, I called the man Nicodemus. And I said to you, from today you shall be Nicodemus. And I explained to him, Nicodemus was a teacher of the law who came to Jesus at night. And the same way you have, you know, received salvation at night, the man, of, man from God came with his word and gave you the word of salvation from night. And the man willingly accepted the Lord. Hallelujah. The mystery of the miraculous, the mystery of the, of the new birth requires no other activity of gestation. There is no process of salvation. It is immediate if we confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in our heart, God raised him from the dead. You are born again, and you are not born again 500 times. No, if you keep falling into sin, the word of God says in First John chapter 1, verse 9, If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just, and will cleanse us from all manner of unrighteousness. Verse 10 of 1 John verse 10, it says that if we claim that we, are not, we have not sinned, we make God out to be a liar. And the truth is not in us. Hallelujah. What a joy. I love the gospel of John. Verse 22, it says, After this, Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside, where he spent some time with them and baptized now John was also baptizing at Eon near Salim because there was plenty of water and people were constantly coming to be baptized. This was before John was put in prison. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one who you testified about, well, he's, about, he's baptizing and everyone is going to him. To this John replied, A man can receive only what is given him from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Christ, but I'm sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. Hallelujah. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and it is now complete. He must become greater. I must become less. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who is from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. The man who has accepted it has certified that God is truthful. Hmm. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For God gives the Spirit without limit. Hallelujah! The Father loves the Son and has placed everything in His hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life.
for God's wrath remains on him. Beloved, this makes it the most amazing thing that if you go out for mission, speak the words of God. Speak only the words of God. Do not get into the other things, earthly things that will not make good use of the time you have. Invest the time more on sharing the word of God. You may think that is so basic what you want to share, but imagine there's nobody who has ever heard what you're about to tell them from God's word. The one who is sent from God speaks the words of God. The one who's been sent from the earth speaks of earthly things. So you can determine the kind of ministry you want to bring every single time you go out on mission and every single time you go out talking to somebody else. Are you trying to make their life better here on earth? Then that makes you a social change individual. You belong into the NGO world. The first thing you need is to bring the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel is what is required and needed. We don't need food or clothes for the gospel to be preached. But we will bring them, we will take responsibility as the church and feed the hungry. We will take responsibility as the church and collect all the orphans and put them somewhere safe. Because this is the responsibility of the church. But this is not the mission of the church. I want to mention that the mystery of the new birth is the most amazing thing that you need to constantly focus on leading people to Christ 150 times over. That the percentage should be beyond 100. But you need to trust God that many will come to this truth that it is by grace through faith that we have been saved. <laughs> there is no other miracle. That's the main miracle. The moment I find myself talking about earthly things, you know, how trying to, you know, do things physically, it becomes a bit difficult. But the moment we trust God and begin to move in His direction, the direction that He provides is that men will give their hearts to the Lord by faith. That the mystery of salvation it does not require gestation. I say it again. The mystery of salvation does not need, the new birth does not need a gestation. Ninacho sema ni kwamba, haitaji kipindi kama chakupata mimba ya mwanadamu. Ndi wazaliwa mtoto. Katika injili ya kweli, mtoto anazaliwa mara tu anapo kiri yesu ni buwana. What I've said in Swahili is that there is no process or procedure or steps or 50 times things that you need to do for salvation. It is purely by grace through faith. <laughs> it is that way. That's how we follow Jesus. We don't go for some lessons. 20 lessons like this. Then we are given a different colored handkerchief. Then we go to another stage. Then now we say, now you have attained salvation. Mm -mm. We can only do that in our own studies where we have undergraduate, you get a master's, you go for a PhD, you go for master, you know, MBAs and all these things. These are graduated levels of education. But do not confuse salvation with your works. Salvation cannot be equal to the works we do. There are some very good people but I still have rejected the light. They walk in darkness. Why? Because they have not accepted that Jesus is Lord and that he came in the flesh. For God so loved the world that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This is the most important video on the internet. I am telling you, <laughs> this one is the most important video on the internet that men must follow Christ. They must believe in Him. They must confess Jesus as Lord and believe in their hearts. They say, what about we who have not believed? Then those who have not believed have not yet heard the gospel. And that's why the gospel of salvation is truth that God so loved the world that He gave. Hallelujah. The most important video on the internet is for this information to get to you. That Jesus came in the flesh. 
and he became flesh and he was the light of the world is that life was the light to men he was there from the beginning is not you know like you know many people sometimes get confused thinking that meaning that god had to have a wife for him to get a son no the son was already there even before he came down hey the book of philippians chapter 2 will help us to understand that aspect because there's a place where you know and it makes a lot of uh, intellectual sense when somebody says god cannot have a son because he never got married the issue is not about that one you need to understand that god the father god the son god the spirit is god there is one god that's why he says here O israel the lord your god the lord is one shama israel adonai elohenu Adonai Ehad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. This is the reality that we must possess today, beloved of God. That unless you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you, you will be saved if you confess. And you instantly get born in the spiritual realm. The spirit gives birth to spirit and the flesh gives birth to flesh. The only way that you are transformed into life internally, life eternal, is if you believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. It says here in verse 36, whoever believes in the Son has, has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life for God's wrath remains on him. Why is it such a big deal that you must believe the Son? It's because being in every form God, He considered it not robbery. Let me show you that in Philippians. Oh, glory to God. We must end quick, uh, we must end shortly and then get on to other activities. Philippians 2, verse 6, it says, Who being, okay, let me start verse 5, it says, your attitude should be like the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. So, being in very nature God, our Lord Jesus Christ humbled himself to the nature of man that he created and came down upon the earth, was born not of any human effort, but of godly intention. Hallelujah. It was godly intention that the issue of Jesus being come, coming upon the earth began in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 that is the place where the plan of this mystery birth begins it begins in genesis chapter 3 verse 15 i told you everything in the book of john you will see it relate to genesis exodus all that because as many as have come to teach and to preach that the old testament is obsolete you know what if you are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, the whole Bible is one. It is not old, new. No, it is scripture. It is God breath. It is hurried boss. It is, it is, uh, it is good for correction. It's good for rebuking. It's good for building up so that the man of God will be well equipped. There's no time you're going to say, Oh, no, no, no. That was the Old Testament. No, 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 no. It's the scripture. We apply it. Is the new and the old together fulfilled in Yeshua, our Mashiach, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me show you this one. Hallelujah. I feel the grace of God so powerfully as I read this scripture. It says in verse 15, and this is the plan of the mystery, mysterious new birth. It's here in Genesis where we get it. What does it say? And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you he will strike his heel. 
immediately the plan of salvation kicked in when the first man Adam failed you know he tried to say it's this woman you know but where was the man and this is why it's important for men to take responsibility as as I said the concept that the earth has brought about that there is a single parent it is not possible for a child to be generated without a father whether you get a donation of sperm the father exists and that is not the pattern which you know god would want us to go by where women are saying i don't want to get married i don't need a husband i just need a baby this is you know a dysfunction that is brought about by the sinful desire called selfish ambition selfish what ambition i did mention that in the book of galatians chapter 5 is the origin of all the sinful nature if you want to check there's a checklist there <laughs> there's a checklist in the book of galatians chapter 5 from verse 19 the works of the sinful nature are obvious they are very obvious we see them we know them you can see the acts of the sinful nature from far and every government on earth has a law against the work of the flesh every government on earth even the place where they do not have gospel even where the gospel has not reached they have laws against sexual immorality they have laws against drunkenness they have laws against hatred they have laws against all kinds of sexual immor of, Im of debauchery and all those things and you notice that the reason why these things have law is because they are not like the spiritual things the spiritual things have no law against them there's no law against love there is no law against peace there's no law against patience there's no law against goodness. There's no law against faithfulness. There's no law unless that place is wicked. That's why they say don't love each other. There is no law such like that. Even among the worst of the worst of the worst, if you take baboons, creatures that are not even human, and for example, you take their baby, and then when you are seated like this, you take a big rock and you do like this, like you want to, uh, to kill the, this baby baboon. Hey, you will learn that they know killing is wrong. How did they know it's wrong? When you look at the creatures that God has created, the birds, the what, you will notice that there is a law that governs life that has been put in place by God. That's why there is no chaos. Clouds don't fall and bang houses. No. There is a, there is a certain material they carry that allows us to fly through the, the clouds. Even when the clouds are full of water and lightning comes when the two of them crash, you notice that God has a law, a system that you cannot be able to break. Now, I want to show you something again, because we must live by the Spirit. The mystery of the new birth. Ay, ay, ay. This is the most important video on the internet. I want to tell you for real. The most important video on the internet is for men to know that it is by grace through faith that you have been saved. None of yourselves that no one should boast. Ah, this is sweet. Again, I bring to you the acts of the sinful nature. They are obvious. And if at all you find yourself operating in a certain direction, just know you are operating in the sinful nature. It is very clear to know about the sinful nature in action because it is obvious. Sexual immorality is the first sinful nature impurity debauchery idolatry and witchcraft idolatry and witchcraft work together why because the sin of rebellion is what is witchcraft <laughs> beloved of god it's good for you to learn these things because as we are getting into the wonderful journey lord of of the scriptures we must love the bible we must love the bible completely completely totally we must completely sink in it love it love the word of god every single time not only when we have a need not only when we um when we have uh, we have things that we want god to do for us god is not there for your convenience 
He's not there for our convenience. In First Samuel, chapter number 15, verse 23, it says, Rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Now, if you see them, they are walking together in Galatians, know that idolatry and witchcraft they walk together the same way rebellion and arrogance walk together i repeat idolatry and witchcraft walk together the same way rebellion and arrogance walk together so if there is a way you find yourself being rebellious in nature look for yourself you are finding yourself in the place called witchcraft if you find yourself being arrogant, you know, in fact, there's a time I was praying and then um, the Lord mentioned something to my heart. You know, when you use words like, I don't care, I don't care, <laughs> careful, because those words, even if you say, I don't care what the enemy will do to me, no, 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 no. You need to walk with a lot of wisdom because there are words that will become flesh for you that you did not want them to become flesh. Arrogance in itself will bring idolatry. Witchcraft, idolatry and witchcraft is the same as rebellion and arrogance. So if you walk in rebellion, you are walking in witchcraft. If you walk in arrogance, you are walking in idolatry. They walk together like this. Idolatry and witchcraft. Hatred and discord. They walk together. Jealousy and fits of rage. Cousins. Selfish ambition. Factions, dissensions, envy, drunkenness, orgies. So... As we come to an end, we're going to be talking more about this. Our time is up. We bless the Lord for giving us grace. I cannot go without mentioning to you about how you can give your life to Christ. The word of the Lord says in the book of Romans chapter 10, Romans 10 and verse 9. It says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Salvation is a gift. You receive it by faith, by grace through faith. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray with you that is turning away from rebellion, that is turning away from arrogance, that is turning away from envy, that is turning away from jealousy, that is turning away all this sinful nature. You can say, oh, no, 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 I'm not jealous. <laughs> but you see, that is the very nature of a man. The very nature of a man is to be jealous. The very nature of a man, the sinful nature is obvious. The very nature of a man is sexual immorality. The very nature of a man is debauchery. The very nature of a man is idolatry and witchcraft. It's the very nature so when you start looking for scandals, there are no scandals. They are just men operating like themselves. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ, he taught us something and he said he knew what was in a man. So the mystery of the new birth begins with you accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. I've been privileged of the Lord, I would say. To be able to meet people at that very, very point they are making that decision. I don't even preach. I don't even take long. I just explain the scripture and the person is ready for salvation. Over this weekend, by the mercy of God, I saw uh, many come to faith, including my friend Evander, for many years, five years. We met after five years. And... um. As we met, it was it was really really incredible because uh, the Lord helped us to, you know, share about the goodness of God and and He gave His life to Christ. It was so so awesome, and uh, yeah, 
So <laughs> he was excited that now I kept a beard like him. I didn't have a beard before when we met and I was slightly uh, differently looking. So I was happy that my friend Evander gave his life to Christ on Saturday, um, the 21st of, is it the 20th? Yes, the 20th of January. So I really thank God for him. And also in the same, same breath, on the same day, I also was able to uh, to meet others that gave their life to Christ. And it was amazing to see the faithfulness of God because God is so mighty. God is so faithful. God answers prayers. God answers prayers a lot. So I'm so grateful for, for God to, you know, um, bring people to faith. And I'm so grateful to God for my friend Evander. And also later on, on that same day, I also, the same place where I was stopping, I will put this in a post on my Facebook, then you can be able to read. But it's such a joy that God, by his mercy, has enabled us to hear about the gospel of salvation and to be able to share that same gospel with others so that that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life it was such a joy and great privilege to be able also um to meet up with others that also gave their life in Christ, to christ in mulolongo area some kids and uh that's on the right there we have um, we have uh, Jennifer, Martha, uh, Kawera, and these two lovely young boys right there in uh, Mlolongo. They were able to give their life to Christ. They are, yani from where they are, they are surrounded by churches, so many churches. But we thank God that they received the Lord Jesus Christ also at that time. So, beloved of God, as I conclude, I want to thank God for your watching and also praying so do subscribe if you've not subscribed this video up to this point and let's continue on with the journey as the lord enables me um by the masses of god just turn your notifications on because uh, sometimes it's not possible for me to know when i will go live when i get an opportunity is when i will go live but definitely and most assuredly we are going on through the gospel of john together by the grace of god we skipped yesterday the one day we missed one day but we'll recover it maybe by doing a night uh, an extra video on one day so we bless the lord shalom and god bless you